Shikha, we're going to talk about a little about Chayshech, Shikha. In general, we think that forgetfulness is a curse, that you forget, and we're going to talk about what this idea of forgetfulness is, but just very quickly, Nechavis Olavav is Botan and Yoin also, that it's actually a chesed of the Ebesha. There's a chesed, it's a kindness, that Hashem created the brain in a way that we actually forget things, because imagine every tragedy was always present in front of our eyes, or for that matter, every joy that we experienced would be transparent and present, we wouldn't be able to live in the moment. We're going to talk about the choyshech of shikha, the idea of the darkness of forgetfulness. So the choyshech of at the time, and there was darkness upon the abyss. So the Medrash Rabbah, in the beginning of, the beginning of Bereisha says, that that is Golos Yavam. That choyshech, darkness, refers to Yavam. The idea of that it was a dark time. Yavan, the Greeks, are connected to the idea of Chayshech. And what they wanted, the Greeks, was Lashkicham Torah Lashkicham Torah they should forget the Torah. Lashkicham Torah Lashkicham, it's in the word Chayshech, Shikhaz Chayshech. That the the battle was a battle for Torah Shabbat. In contrast to the Greek philosophers, the Greek philosophy was uh, the empirical philosophy, the philosophy of what what you see is what you believe. And the idea of Torah Shabbat was the idea of the transcendence, and that's a very general the idea. That's why we light a candle because a candle represents something that's a visual, but that leaps upwards, so that it represents something that's transcendent. But the basic question is, how strong a question is, we can debate, but the question is, if the idea of the Greek exile, the Golos Yavon, was against, was contrast to Lashkicham Torah Secha, that they should forget the Torah, to create a Choshech in Torah, so why is it that Hanukkah, the way we we celebrate Hanukkah is that we celebrate Hanukkah by doing a mitzvah. In other words, how do we celebrate Hanukkah? Hanukkah we celebrate by, by creating a Ner Hanukkah. And it's brought down that Ner Hanukkah is actually Gematria Shikha. So to contrast the Shikha, the idea of forgetfulness, we light a candle. So if, but the truth is, the, the question is, if the idea is Lashkicham Torah Secha, you would think that what would be the response to Lashkichem Torah Secha? We would add Torah. Just like in Purim. What do we do in Purim? That in Purim, we say that what happened through the story of Purim, that it was, there was, there was an added book in the Torah. That in the Tanakh, in the Chav, Chav Dal Kisar Kodesh, there was a new Sefer that was added, which is the Esther. Like the Gemara in Megillah learns, that we learn it that it has to be remembering the the. the uh, Schiris Amalek, remembering Amalek, has to be in the Torah, in the Vim, and also now in Ksuvim. And there's your Shalmi Megillah, Perig Beis Dalad, that says, the Gemara says, a Kavim Lumesechas, that there was a special Mesechta that was created for Purim. So why not by Hanukkah? Why, if Lashkichem Torah Secha, the response should have been, Okay, so you don't want to say that they added a kiss of because it was a later period of time, but at least the Masech does Hanukkah. So the question is not why is there no Masech does Hanukkah. That's already a, a technical question. The question is, why is the response to Lashkichem Torah Secha for the idea of forgetfulness, why is the, the response to forgetfulness is an action? You would assume that the response to forgetfulness would be a remembrance. And a remembrance, if it's the idea for Torah, you would think that the response to that would have been Torah. Torah. The response to Lashkichim Torah Secha would add Torah, not add a mitzvah. You're following? This is the, if, if the idea is Lashkichim Torah Secha, the idea of Torah, that's not, that's, but there's a, a specific thing they're trying to make you forget. They're trying to make you forget Torah. If it's Lashkichim Torah Secha, you would think that the response to Lashkichim Torah Secha is Nistais of Torah. Not that the mitzvah of Hanukkah is ner. 
that the mitzvah of specifically in the mitzvah. The Gemara says on the pasuk in their mitzvah Torah, the Gemara Saita Chafalov says that what's the, that Torah is like an oil, like light, and a mitzvah is like a candle. And the Gemara says one of the reasons the Gemara brings a different reason. That just like a nair only protects or only shines for, for a temporary time period, the same thing also mitzvahs only protects for a temporary time period. However, Torah, Torah is megin alaylam. So there's a difference between Torah is eternal forever. The basic structure of a nair, what does a nair mean? What is a, a nair, a candle, in contrast to light? A candle represents something that's constantly flickering. So first of all, it has a short lifespan. It's, it's lit at a particular time and then it, it extinguishes. But the concept of a candle is that it's constantly rots of a shuv. It's constantly moving. It's, it's backwards and forwards. It's constantly shining. You ever sit next to a candle? It's constantly, there's a darkness and there's a light. It keeps on leaping. The concept of a, of, of, of mitzvah is connected specifically to ner because it's not permanent. The idea of oyer, what is the idea of oyer? Oyer is that there's no, no possibility of, of, of any other... Alter, there's, no, there's no alternative to oyer. If you, if you are the oyer, if, if, if you imagine, if you're, the, if you're the sun itself, it's not that some days you're shining and some days you're not shining. You are the light. If you're re, the recipient of the oyer, so sometimes you can receive the light, sometimes you don't receive the light. But if you're the oyer itself, you're always lit. So the, the Torah is connected to the Ayur. Mitzvah is connected to the Ner. So, so why create Lashkichim Torah Secha? Why from Lashkichim Torah Secha, why create a Ner? Why don't create Torah Ayur? Create more Torah. In other words, for the, in the Madrega, uh, the concept of Ayur is no Shikha. Because there's no helm, there's no, there's no, there's no forgetfulness, there's no darkness because there's no concealment. In the idea of what the light is, the light always is. In the idea of a candle, by definition, the candle there's a possibility of chayshach. So why create something that has a possibility of chayshach? Why instead of lashikim tari secha, you're creating something, and the mitzvah is to light a candle that has within it the possibility that it can be extinguished, or or even more. Every single moment the candle is lit. It's being, it's, it's jumping from revealing itself and concealing itself every single moment. So the Gemara says, the Gemara in Erevin and Dalit says, in Charis Aluchas, Shalomalai le Nishbar Aluchas lo Yeshikra, lo Yishaka Torah Yisrael. That if there would only be the first Luchas, there wouldn't have been any forgetfulness. There wouldn't, we wouldn't have forgotten Torah. Torah would have been Torah Ar. Not Torah of Ner, but Torah of Ar. The Yishalmi in Shkalim Vavalev explains the difference between the Luchas Roshonis that the Luchas Roshonis, the Luchas Roshonis, are Yichtuvim Me'ever Le'ever. It was it it was written, it was in, it was engraved from through and through, which means that from every side that you looked at the Luchas, if you look from the front or from the back, it said the exact same thing. Now that's not it's counterintuitive because you can't imagine that, but because if you're 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 writing something you're, you're Carving something else, and the other side will look the opposite. But there was no, there was no opposite side. Mishnei Averayim, which means that there was no bechina of Acharayim. There's no backside. What is Acharayim? What is bechina of Acharayim? Acharayim, the backside represents the place of shikha. Like the Alter Rebbe explains in Kutus Achin Vav, and it's also brought down in some of the sources that we had. That if there's no Acharayim, there's no, there's no back. Everything is revealed that there's no possibility of forgetfulness. And that's also what the Gemara says in the Dharam that um, if there was only the Luchas Roshonis, if there was only the Luchas Roshonis, means if there was no Chet, we would only have Torah Shabbat Sav. Torah Shabbat Sav, only the written Torah. The written Torah represents the Torah of Ar in its potential and in, in, its, in, its, in its conception. What do we have because the, because the luchas were nishbar, because it was the broken luchas, which the broken luchas represents the idea of brokenness, which is forgetfulness. Because of that, because of shir is a luchas, because of shikha, we have Torah Shabbat Peh. That the possibility of Torah Shabbat Peh, the possibility of the oral tradition, which is the, our participation in the Torah, is that you forget, and then you re-remember. 
Or like uh, the famous Gemara, the Gemara says in that you, you learn Kol HaToyer Kula, and then you forget it, and the process of, of learning is actually re-remembering something that you forgot. But the, the, the concept that there's a possibility of forgetfulness only occurs because of the broken luchas. And if there would only be the first luchas, then it would always be revealed, it would always be transparent. Now, could you call the original revealing of Torah Shebek Sav in its original form, could you call that remembrance? If, you, if you're living in a state or there's a reality that everything is transparent and revealed at all times, and there's no possibility of forgetfulness, is remembrance really remembering? Or the concept of memory can only exist in contrast to forgetfulness. You can forget, and then you could remember. But if something is continuously being revealed, and there's no possibility for forgetfulness, there actually is no memory. Because memory is an active process. You remember. So if, if you're remembering something, it means that there's a possibility that you could forget. And now you're remembering. But if everything, someone says, you're looking at this, this, this white sheet, and I remember that it's a white sheet. No, you're not remembering it's a white sheet. You're seeing that it's a white sheet. It's present. The only way there's a possibility for, forget, for memory is if something is possible to be forgotten. So the memory, the Lanishka Khayyim is there wouldn't be forgetfulness because there wouldn't be the possibility of forgetfulness. But in a way, that's also not, there's no, there's no memory. There's no zikaran. So zikaran memory is an active process that you're choosing to remember. It's a process where you're choosing to, to, become, to become reminded. This one says, A person does not establish divrei Torah only if he first stumbles, or she first stumbles on, this, on the topic. The nichshabat chila, the stumbling on something, allows you to actually truly remember. If you forget, and then you work on yourself to remember, then you actually really remember. But if you don't have the nichshel bat chila, if you don't have first that the stumbling, then you don't actually have memory. So Torah Shalapah, the concept of Torah Shalapah, the concept of Torah Shalapah, the oral tradition, only exists in a place where there's the possibility of forgetfulness, and there's the active memory. And this is why, this is why the story of Hanukkah was specifically not written down. Not even a Masech is Hanukkah. Because the Yavonim wanted Lashkichem Torah Secha. Lashkichem Torah Secha, which part of the Torah? The Torah Shabal Peh, the oral tradition. The Torah Shabal Peh is the place of where, where there's a potential for Shikha. If there's a potential for forgetfulness, what's the antidote of the potential for forgetfulness? To remember. But if you write it down, it's no longer memory. If you write something down in a, in, in a, in a paper, and you say, this is what happened. So you don't have to remember. It's clear. It's in front of you. It's present. It says exactly what happened. But if I tell you something orally, and I say, please remember this thing, so that is fighting your, your the, the, the remembrance is, is the antidote is fighting the concept of, of forgetfulness. So that's why the Torah Shalom, that's specifically why Hanukkah was not written down the Zoma Sechta, because if you're, if you're countering the, the idea of Lashichim Torah Secha, so what do we have to do? We have to remember. So how do you remember if it's oral? So this is why it says, Dafka, Dafka, Ner. Because Ner is the Bakam Shikha. And, um, okay, so, th- so, that's, so that's why it's, it's Dafka um, specifically in the idea of remembering, orally remembering, and not that it's written. Because once it's written, it's no longer memory. So just like there's memory, we say that there's, there's memory to remember only exists in a place where there's a possibility to forget. And when there's a place where there's full transparency of something, it's not actually memory, it just is. So same thing also does the opposite. There's sometimes a possibility of total forgetfulness. So let's just define it in three constructs. There's a place of memory in a place where there's a potential to forget. That's where Torah Shalapai occurs. In the place where a person is possibility to forget and remembers. That's Torah Shalapai. There's a place where there's total forgetfulness where there's no possibility to remember any longer. And then 
there's a place where there's forgetful, there's actual forgetfulness. Not shikha in potential, not forgetfulness in potential, but you forgot. Not that you're total, sometimes you forget something, you don't remember exactly what you, rem- what, what you remember, what you, what you knew, but you knew that you knew something, but you forgot what it was. Sometimes you forget something, you forgot totally that you even knew. But that type of forgetfulness is very, it's almost impossible to reclaim that memory. But sometimes you forget something that you knew you knew, but now you forgot it. When you know something, when you know that you knew, but you forgot, what you have left is a Roshima. It's an imprint. You have like the inclination, an imprint, a Roshimu of what you really knew before. You don't remember exactly the way you knew it, but you have an imprint of that Roshimu. We see a residue, like a residue, an imprint, a residue of that, of that effect. We find that, you, that Yaakov, we found in last week's Parsha, that when Yaakov was leaving after he had the dream, and he's leaving, he's gonna, he, makes, he collects the stones and he, he makes an outside. What does he do? He pours oil over it. Right? He's the Yatsuk Shaman, he pours, he pours oil. Why does he pour oil? If you remember from last year in Shaman. So the Radak, Arabin Bechaya, and the Rashash and Ashalim, and many people bring down this idea because oil creates a Rishibu. It's Oysa Rishim. That the idea of oil is something that creates a residue of something. If you pour water on the floor, and then it's cleaned up, it's cleaned up. You don't see even that there was water there. When you pour oil on the floor, even if you, it dries up or you clean it up, you see the stain reminds you that something happens. So what is Hanukkah? Hanukkah, this is the first level that we're understanding is, Hanukkah is dafka through oil. Dafka through Shemin. Why is it specifically through Shemin? Because the Shemin is a Rishimu that reminds us. If there's Lashkech and Torah Sechah, there's idea of forgetfulness, so how do you unforget you're reminded of something that reminds you of something else. There's a Rashim of it. Chazal say, Chazal say in Yerushalmi, I'll see Yerushalmi, Perik Beis, hey. Ein oisin nefashas le sadikim, shedivreim heim zechorinam. The Gemara is talking about a matzeva, a tombstone that people would put a tombstone over a person that passes away. So the Gemara says, you don't, ein oisin and nefashis, nefashis is the word for matzeva in Chazal. Uh, you don't make a, 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 a tzion. That's the f- more popular word. Tzion is like a sign or a tombstone. Um, the tzaddikim, for the words for the righteous. Why? Because she's the very him Because the words of the righteous, that's their memory. And that's actually la lacha, the Raman Paskins, and the chesavol, dala dal. What does this mean? Divrayim, what's Divrayim? What's Divrayim of Tzadikim? What's the words of Tzadikim? Divrayim of Tzadikim is a Divrayim Torah. So we're saying that we don't need to remember a person that passed away, a great teacher, that his, his words are, 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 are still alive, because you don't need to remember them because Divrayim, Hem Zechayim, you actually remember them through their words. But what happens to a person that passes away that's not a Tzadik or not in that level? So what do you do? So you create a Tzion. What's a tzion? A tzion is a mark. It's a rishimu. It's a mark to say, this is weird. This person, that who is this person? We're reminding me of who that person was. Passed away. And here is, this is the place of the burial. So the, the idea of a tzion is a remembrance to when there is no divrei Torah. When does divrei Torah, remember, shikham Torah, sechah, divrei Torah. When does divrei Torah, that's the remembrance. So when there's a, pl- when there's a possibility, when there's a potential forgetfulness. And then you overcome the potential of forgetfulness because there's a remembrance through the words of the Torah. Then you actually don't have to create any physical marker because there's no need for a marker. But when there's no divrayim, when it's so forgotten that we forgot even the words, so if, when you forget the words, you need a sign. You need a tzion. And this is actually what Rashi writes, a very interesting Rashi, in the name of Sifriya, there's, there's a Ramban, other people have a big complication with this Rashi. On the post of the Sam Dezoriel of Avchal and Nashim Kshart Mason Liyatchem, Rashi writes like this: Af la Acher Shetizgalu, Shetiglu. Even after when you you're in exile, Hayu Mitzayinim Mitzvus. You should be Mitzayinim, like you should make a Tzion of Mitzvus, markers of Mitzvus. Hinichot Tfilin Asim Mezuzah Kidei, because Kidei Shi Olechem Chadashim Kishadachshu. So it shouldn't be like new when you back when you when you go back into Eretz Yisrael. Because it says, 
You should place markers. So what does Rashi say? Rashi says that really mitzvahs, the full level of mitzvahs is when we do the mitzvah is when we're dafkin Eretz Yisrael. Specifically in Eretz Yisrael. But when you're not in Eretz Yisrael and you're in exile, so what you should do is you should do the mitzvah and the mitzvah should be like a tziyam. Because of mocking that there's this, this total forgetfulness, you're going to forget how to, do, how to put on tefillin, how to put on a mezuzah. So, so, so I'll say, put tefillin on, put a mezuzah on as a marker so you'll know when you enter into the real thing, to do it the real way, you'll know what to do. So the mitzvah itself is like a tzim. Tzi- the mitzvah is a tzim. The mitzvah is a marker, it's not the thing in itself. That's a, that's, it's a marker to remember. So this is what, and this is why, maybe, Hanukkah, specifically in the place of Lashkichim Torah Secha, what do we do? We do a mitzvah, not Torah. Because uh, when there is only the potential of forgetfulness, which is the whole construct of Torah Shabbat Peh, when there's a whole idea of Torah Shabbat Peh, so then what you have to do for Torah Shabbat Peh is you have to give rain, as a friend, you have to actually learn, so that's all you'll remember. But what happens if you reach a place of Golish, that, 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 that the Choshech of Yavon, when we forgot what the what the vreim is when we no longer remember the vreim? So what we need is like a sirushimu. We need a tzion. We need a marker that the marker will remind us what it once was. So then, when we do have it, we'll be remind, reminded. And this is why that on Hanukkah, yes, Leimar, that on Hanukkah in the in, in, in the reason why we have a ner that we like specifically a ner. Because because the ner represents in a place of chayshim, and the ner is a mitzvah. Ner mitzvah tayron. We do a mitzvah because it's, the mitzvah is the marker. So this is the way this is the way it works in general. So we do things, we do practices in a very simple language. Sometimes when you're when you're so lost of of when you remember that you remembered something and you know what you have to remember, you try to remember it. So try to remember it. But if you can't, then you make a sign. And the sign is a reshimo that allows you to remember. So the, the ner mitzvah, the, the, the candle of Hanukkah, reminds us, so we shouldn't have l'shkichim t'ayasecha. So specifically in, in the mitzvah itself. Now the Shalom Kaddish writes, in many places, in Masech in many other areas, that the oilam is a reshim Torah, and the Torah is a reshim alakus. That the world is a reshimo, is an imprint of the Torah, and the Torah is a reshimu of elikus, which means that when you look at the world, what's the, the what's the objective of looking at the physical world? The objective of in, in looking through the physical world, as you can see this as a reshimu, an imprint that reminds you the, of what the Torah is, and the Torah is a reshimu reminds you of what a kaddish baruch is. So you're moving upwards. Copy of a copy. It's a copy of a copy. Now, normally we think about Rishimu is that Rishimu works from past to future. So you have you had a certain thing. Let's say you spilled the oil. You don't have the oil any longer, but you have the mark that the oil was spilled. So what does the Rishimu do? The Rishimu reminds you of what it was so you can recreate what happened or re-remember what happened before. It's like you put a sign to remind you what happened before. But in the world of in the world of Alakus, Rishimu actually can work the other way as, or as, other way also. Rishimu doesn't only have to work from the past to the future, from the past to the present. We can actually work from the future to the present. And this is what Tzadik writes that the Rishimu of a mitzvah. Usually, you think of Rishimu mitzvah is that I do something now and has a Rishimu an effect in the future. But it also actually works in the reverse because you're going to do something in the future. It has an effect now in the present that you actually have a Rishimu of something you're going to do. And this is why Hanukkah is turned on its head. The Hanukkah is turned on its head in the Chesidosh Svarim or in the Sifri Asoid is because I'm going to say the Hanukkah is not just the Rishimu that reminds us of something that happened in the past. So we shouldn't have Lashkich and Torah of what happened then. But Hanukkah is a Rishimu of imprint of what's going to happen in the future. And that's why Hanukkah is Lashkich of the future. It's like a, for, a, a forspice of what's going to be in the future. So it's a Rishimu from the past into the present, so it's not only a reminder of the Shechem Torah of what happened in the story of Hanukkah, but it's also uh, an indication of what's going to happen in the future. So maybe we should actually be able to celebrate Hanukkah, we should connect to the oil of Hanukkah.
Which Vlad? The Rishim of Lefrek? The, the Vart that Rishim of Lefrek passes is the Psadok. Psadok writes it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all the Chinnish Svar. It's a nice Oscar. Yeah, I'm having trouble with the Gematria of Shifta and Nair Hanukkah. No, without the Vav. <laughs> it's Hanukkah without the Vav. It's a play Menachem for the Geirs. So we have it in the packet. Yeah. Yeah. I, I was wondering about the, um, so the idea that something like physical can yeah. resurrect that memory. It sounded like there was a schema of like, right, Dibor before Misa. The, the, the Dibre Torah would come before needing an oath. For physical. sure, because the Dibre Torah is in place when, when, when you're having, when you're, when you're, when you're forgetting, but when you, when you, when you're, when you're still engaged in memory, that you still have some traces of the memory of what happened, right. you just need the right language. So the oasis himself, the shvir saluch, is the brokenness, sometimes allows you to, to reconnect to that memory, and that's when you correct proper memory. But sometimes the person is so lost and so forgotten that all they have is a rishimu. Right. So what you have is just an imprint that reminds you, ah, that something was here. I don't remember what it was. But if I have that thing, that will allow me to be reminded of something. So that's the Ner Hanukkah. Ner Hanukkah is in a way is in the Chayshech when the Chayshech becomes so deep that it's no longer Tarsh Shalpeh. Tarsh is not going to help, so to say. We don't just remember to remember. We remember what we're meant to remember. Through that. Through that. It's not, it doesn't, it's not that the Maisa brings you back to the deep words. It brings you back to the Manshavah. It brings you back to the Manshavah. Correct. Uh, correct. 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 She wants to correct the Correct. It's like a spark then. It's a spark. Like, but Rashi uses the same word, siyun. It's interesting that Yash, Rashi uses the word siyun, and the Gemara uses it in Shkalim about the Reim and Zechayim, that you don't have to make a matzeh, which is a siyun. You don't make a marker when you have words. So when you have words, when you have something that's a living tradition, something that's a living memory, even if you don't remember fully, you don't need a marker. But when you have really full shikha, real forgetfulness, then you actually need a marker. And that's what I want to say the opposite direction, which is when there's full revealing, it's not memory. And that's why internet is gematria shikha. Because when you have... When you have yeah, because when you have full memory, transparent memory, it's not really memory. That's why people have all the information, they don't remember anything. Ask anyone, they'll tell you, okay, I know everything. You just press Google, you know everything. But what do you know? You know nothing. You don't even know how to get to your house. You put on ways, no one knows direction, no one knows anything, no one knows numbers and action, but you know everything actually. The reason why you actually don't remember because memory only exists when there's a possibility of forgetting. When it's an active process, then you actually remember. When it's a passive process, when everything is just revealed, there's no memory. A lot of people have this inside in the that they record Shuria. That's correct. And it, it takes away from them this, this, this run so to, to remember. To, to work and remember correct. Again. Remember literally means to put back together. Everything. Everything, who you are, what's our purpose? <laughs> what do you mean? Our whole life is one big forgetfulness. That's so that that so that you have to do a marker. <laughs> That's a Hanukkah support. You're going to remember to do a marker. To... Like, are we trying to remember everything? Like the waking up of our sleeping soul? Of our light, of our soul, of our Torah, everything. The Torah Shabbat. Really, it's a Torah Shabbat. The Torah Shabbat is our our participation in the Torah, our lives. We're trying to reawaken our ourselves in the process. Someone asked a question before. I'll just tell you very quickly, but then we'll get these questions. Someone asked a question. It's a question only if you study a certain text. That uh, well, how come the story of Hanukkah is only uh, only mentioned the the, mirac- the the victory, not the miracle of the oil? And Chazal mentioned the miracle of the oil. And I was telling, really, Hanukkah is about really our participation. Hanukkah, we spoke about this last call very quickly, that the miracle of Hanukkah occurred to very individual people. It's the only Yom Tov in the, in, in, in the year that we celebrate for, a, for an event that only was experienced by individual people. Most of Klal Yisrael did not experience Hanukkah, the Nes Hanukkah. Purim, they experienced the, Han- the Nes Hanukkah, Nes Purim. Pesach, but Hanukkah, ten Hashemim experienced Hanukkah. Because the idea of Hanukkah is really our subjective relation to life. We said that the, 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 the aura of Hanukkah is real, the aura of which maybe we'll talk about this later, is really the, the hidden light. When it talks about the hidden light, it talks about Moshe Rabbeinu. Moshe Rabbeinu is the first person to experience that hidden light. It says, that, it says five times the word sna, the Zohar says, corresponds to the five times the word oyer appears in the Maish Mereshes. And what happens when Moshe sees the light? It says, Vayar Hashem kisar liros. Hashem saw that Moshe stopped to see the light. And then Hashem says, okay, you're going to be my person, you're going to take Klai Yisrael out of Golis. 
What, is, what does it really mean? It means Hashem says, there are millions of people that have walked through this bush and no one ever stopped. No one ever was awake enough and open enough to actually see the, the, bur- the burning bush. Hashem saw that this guy stopped. He says, okay, this guy is taking call. He saw it in time. What that means is that the burning bush, the Aragonas is real to every single person, every single moment in their lives. It's just, we're not there. What is Hanukkah? Hanukkah is our participation. Our way of seeing the world. To change our way of seeing the world, that we can see the world of the Aragonas. When we can see the world of Aragonas, then we see the Aragonas. And if we don't, you can walk down the street and see nothing. You see bricks and mortar. But if you open your eyes, if you train yourself, all of a sudden you start seeing a different light. Prospect. Nefke prospect. Nefke prospect. Exactly. Is the Aragonas the original? Dafke Nefke Nefke prospect. The second is the Rishima, yes. Rishima Lenagabat Simpson. Um, is, is it possible to just summate three um, Hanukkah 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 constructs again? Like, there's one, there's one is, in short, in short is, there's one is when there's not memory because it's revealed. That's Tarish Bixav. That's in the place that the Scharis Menaluch is Cheris, there's no Yitzhahara, there's no Shikha, Lenish Kukhari Misral. It's Tarish Bixav, it's revealed. It's constantly being revealed. There's no possibility. It's oil. It's light. There's no possibility. Then there's a possibility where it's a nair, where it's flickering. It's a possibility for choyshech. It's, po- it's shivir luchas. The broken luchas creates betulah shalteres of human. It creates the possibility for forgetfulness. Because it creates the possibility for forgetfulness, we actually have real memory. That's the real memory. That's How do you know when you really understand something? When you first stumbled on it. When it was broken and you stumbled and you and you forgot and you asked and they probed and then you finally got it, that's when you really get it. That's Tarish Shabiksa, that's Tarish Shabapeh, that's Divrayim. And then there's this possibility where it's not only the potential of Shikha, when you actually forgot. I remember something, I don't remember what I what I remembered, but I remember that I, I knew something. For that you need a marker. You need something you need to do a physical action that and to remind you, that will help you remind you and rekindle the original idea. Yeah. You mean the Maimur Pachet Yitzchak? Yeah. Okay, we're going to get to it. Let's, 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 uh, what? One more question. What is it? Jorian, what's asking? What? I don't know. It was a response to the question. Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Um, what? Yeah. 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 Y
And then, you know, we some of us were Zoha to learn Torah from a young age, and some of us had to wait 20 or 30 years in order to learn some Torah back again. But it seems like then, if that's really like a, a serious statement as opposed to just like a fanciful one, yeah. then all Torah learning is from Rishima. Correct. All Torah learning I think is I said from Rishima. I said that. Yes. So then, like, uh, I guess the question is then, so like Hanukkah was coming to reveal something about that as well, right? Because that's like, that's been a part of our, that's been a part of, that, that's always happened with us. That, that, You're asking, so what are you asking? Like, You're asking is, is Hanukkah something that always from the beginning of time? Yeah, kind of. But, yeah, so that ne'er dolok. That Ner Dalek, right? That was revealed, and we say that a person in the womb knows all the Torah Kula. Which Ner which ne- is that? That's the Ayagamos. That's the place of no forgetfulness. Is that the Shamish? The I don't care, that's already a Torah. But I'm saying what that means is that's the place where this full transparency, we're, we're saying we come from a place where we remember everything. But we're born in a place of brokenness. We're born in a place where we forgot and we're trying to re-remember. Now, people that were, you say Zoycha, but it can actually work the other way. Some people that go through the system and at a young age are learning Torah, so the problem is that they get used to a certain way of understanding. When they're five years old, they learn a certain Pasuk, and that's their intelligent level at that five-year-old. And then when they're 35, they're reading the Pasuk the exact same way. But someone that doesn't have that negative memory, and is 25, and looks at the Pasuk, like an intelligent person of 25 looking at the Pasuk, actually has fresh eyes. And they can actually read. So it's a bracha actually to forget. So Reb Zeir fasts, 40 fasts, to, 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 to forget what he learned because he says, if I'm only going to, if everything that I learned today is going to be predicated on what I know yesterday, I never can really learn something new. It's like Choser Beroshev. Choser exactly. You go back into the womb. You're going back into the womb. Don't eat. You said fast. For some reason I thought, oh yeah, if you fast for a long time, you forget what it was like to eat, and then when you finally eat, it's... It hurts even. It's <laughs> That's another thing, but he was failing, so his brain should become weak, and he should literally forget what he what he knew. Like the non-essential things. Or right, right. No, also the certain way of learning. He was learning in Talmud about in Bavel, and he considered that Choshech in car- correspondent to the Talmud that he showed me. So he said, "I want to forget everything I learned in Bavel. So when I come to Eretz Yisrael, it's not going to be through the prison of what I know." Unfortunately, you take a uh, 35-year-old kid that went through the system of Yeshiva, and you learn with him, uh, you know, Bereshit Bar Lakim, his his 90% of the children are going to give you shot of what they learned when they were a kid. And that's when they were five years old. They're going to give you the the positive. Bereshit, and I'm fine. They're going to translate the way. But everything else in their life they think sophisticated. But when it comes to the positive of they're going to translate it as they learn when they're five. So that's the unfortunate part of that. Of course, it comes with other milas. Everything has a mile in the yeah? Um, I learned um, recently about the, with, with creation, the order of moves from creation. Like that, that's what we're looking at when we yeah. look at candles. And when it said by the or, it was like like all the other days it said by the chain. Correct. And when Moshe, I think, or so, I forgot when it was more later it said by the chain something to let. Um, I guess when Moshe transmitted the Torah, maybe yeah. that it like makes up for the for the day. Like that when it said by the or, it's because we didn't. Fully, because Adam sinned, we didn't fully appreciate it. Or something. And then, like, when, once we learn Torah Shabbat, that's when we're really accessing it. So that's, that's also, the Torah Shabbat, is there's the, the whole thing about the 36 hours that Adam and Chava were in, in the in Ganeid, and this corresponds to the 36 tractates of Talmud. Right. So that's a revealing. But that's, again, what's, what, is it, what is the oimic of that idea? The oimic of that, the depth of that idea is, is that we are participating that's what Hanukkah is about, about us participating in remembrance. That's the, the Nekudah of Hanukkah, it's us. It's about Knesset Yisrael. That's why, that's why it's subjective, it's individual.